Hi Homes, welcome back to our channel or if you're new here, welcome to our channel. We are Lauren, Charlotte and <laughs> So as you may remember, last week Bethan mentioned she wouldn't be on the channel for a couple of weeks because she is busy uh, doing, uh, what is she doing? <laughs> Bethan is busy doing some acting work for her. But we decided to continue with the channel on our own. So this week we are continuing with our spooky Halloween theme and we're doing part two of our ghost stories because god damn it we've got so many of them. There's so, so many of them. And if you thought last week's were creepy at all, well this week's are going to be even scarier. So uh, in this video you're going to have a special treat and see Mother Hun's original offspring, the first, the only, <laughs> Number no one. one. No, I, I don't, don't understand why you're number one. Like Charlotte just said, in this video, our sister Alexandra is going to come in and share some of her ghost stories because they are the f scariest thing you'll ever hear. Without further chat, let's get into the video. So this week, we've come prepared. Yeah. Hurry up! I'm Trying. Can you do it? <laughs> One, two, three. Mm. Oh, mine went on my face. Mm. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, mine went on my auntie on a hotel in North Town, and it's a really old building, and it's been a, it's been a care home. It's been a house, it's been a hotel. It's about se uh, 300, 300, three, yeah. It looks like a, a, a Georgian building, doesn't it? When my family took that hotel over, me and Alexandra were the night porters for a little while. Uh, so she would do breakfast service and I'd be still be in the room being a night porter, blah, 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 blah. Uh, one night, we were watching a movie, it was, we'd closed up the hotel, there was no guests in because we were in the middle of like renovating it and stuff like that. And Alexandra was like, shush, what's that? And she paused the movie and I couldn't hear anything. But she was like, there's people talking outside and laughing. So she, but she said it was like female voices. Like she could hear what they were talking about, she could hear them laughing and stuff outside of our room. And our room was 14, you know, that big double. Made. The big twin, I mean. Yeah. So it went 12, 14, because there was no yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, It's 14 down the left, isn't it? Yeah. So she opened the door, and there was no one there. So that freaked Alexandra out. But I was just like, at this point in my life, I was like, things like that scared us, but I didn't actually think it was true. I was always like, it was a trick of the mind. Yeah. Um, so I was just, I was always just like, whatever. Not really. <laughs> didn't believe it. Um, she was freaked out. She went to bed. I eventually fell asleep and I woke up in the middle of the night and the you know how that window faces onto the car park yeah so you would see like the lights from it so the room wasn't completely dark uh, and I seen <laughs> this man in like a like a helmet and a or it was either a hat or a helmet it was like that shape with a, a cloak walk through the door. So you know how the beds, so you had the door, the beds, the bathroom, yeah. came through the door and just disappeared into the bathroom. And that I was the first time I ever saw a ghost in real life. I used to work there for three years in total. Um, and a woman I used to work with, so like when I, when I worked there, I would do like, a few hours on the morning that was it so I would do from like 8 until 12 um, and a woman that I used to work with we were going off to do like laundry so we're collecting all the like oh dirty God, bed and stuff <sighs> what I was gonna say was when 
So we'd like, sh we would always be like, I'll take this floor, you take that floor, we'll meet downstairs, do the laundry. So she had the first floor, I had the second floor. So the first floor is where room 14 is. Um, and she came downstairs and she was like, I know it's not unusual for her to feel weird things, but I was just in room 14 and someone touched my bum. And I was like, no, it was actually she was saying that someone had literally just went and by she worked there for like her. 20 years at that point yeah she yeah so i don't really i don't believe that she was lying i never i always believe people when they talk about paranormal yeah, stuff so why would you make that up do you know what yeah I mean? but i was just like oh my god and so room 14's just got an overall really bad vibe yeah it has do you know what other room i heard um that single room at the end of a hall the top hallway is it next to the window yeah oh that window's horrible so when we were younger <coughs> the bar used to be on the floor one didn't it no yeah it yeah. did you'd be just at the top of the stairs <coughs> so everybody would always be on like ground no floor one first, yeah first floor and like it was just a general consensus that nobody liked going upstairs but so Oh, and he lived there with Riley and Riley's brother because she was the manager. And would always have like parties in the bar. And there'd always be a point in the night where would always all the kids, like all us cousins, would just oh. be like, oh my gosh, shall we go upstairs in the corridor? Stop it, because this story that I'm about, you can carry on, but this story that I'm about to tell is off from one of them times. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh my God, okay, well. And even though nobody liked to go in, up on the second floor corridor because it was fucking terrifying um and i don't know why but every time we'd have a party would all the cousins would just like kind of like together in a group without even being like oh shall we go and see if we can no we all just go and see if we could go down the hall and like not run away crying. like literally knowing that none of us wanted to do it but we we're like yeah. oh let's just do this yeah so one of those times i don't know if we'd gone off as a big group and i also don't know whether it was well, I wasn't there this time you're talking about, so I think yeah, it was that's just why like that's Ellie why I'm thinking because it was Finn, just me and Finn. Oh, was it? I thought Ellie was there. So, um, oh God, I honestly hate talking about the story. It's one of the first, well, it was the first kind of like sighting slash experience I had with mm -hmm. ghosts at all. Um, so this corridor that we're talking about, it's very. Cause I don't think we even described it there, but it's like basically it's just horrible there's like one light and it's really dim there's no windows and the corridor is also very 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 narrow yeah and it's like really really long and at the end there's just one window with, with a little bit of a windowsill yeah with a bit of a windowsill um so one time me and finn i don't know why we did it i honestly couldn't tell you what the thinking was behind it but we we're just like oh let's go here um and finn He's not going to be watching, but Finn's a <laughs> right. <laughs> Finn's an absolute <laughs> even from when he was a little boy. So, <laughs> so I can imagine that it was Finn who brought up the idea to do it. So, we just came... Because th I also forgot to mention this bit. So, the bar that used to be on the first floor, you'd go in, you'd come to the top of the stairs and the door would be there and this would be the bar. Um, but there used to be a door... If you go right at the back on the left, there used to be a door. Do you not remember the door? That was quite heavy and it used to be a fire exit door, but it was in the middle of the corridor. So you could go out the bar and go straight up the corridor like that. You've got to remember Oh, it. yeah. Yeah. But anyway, me and Finn had gone out of this door and we were like, let's just see how long we can be in the corridor for. And I was just like... In the corridor. And like, if people... People don't tend to believe this story because it's like a stereotypical ghost story, yeah. do you know what I mean? But what happened was me and Finn were standing and we were looking out the window because that is the creepiest part <laughs> of the corridor. Um, and like suddenly this little girl appeared sitting on the windowsill looking out the window and she literally... Oh God, I'm actually getting goosebumps. You've never she told literally, me she literally, she literally was like sitting like this and she was just like... And then disappeared, and I was like, F this! And I was like, ah! <laughs> And I remember we were running, um, and we were obviously screaming, and Finn was like nearly crying. I don't know if Finn will even remember it, but Finn was like nearly Shall crying. Yeah. There you go. Hello. 
Hello, hi Charlotte. Um, right, we're just filming a video, right? So basically this is going to be in the video. Um, do you remember that time in the Fox Hotel where we'd gone to the top floor corridor and we were just standing looking out the window and there was a little girl on the windowsill who looked at one and then disappeared? Do you remember or not? No. Oh, Finn, man! Finn! I was room, with you! I didn't remember that, Oh, and well, apparently you ran away crying like a fucking baby, so... I mean, we're both ran away <laughs> screaming. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, thanks for nothing. Bye-bye. Right, bye. When I worked at the hotel, when I'd finish, uh, like, half an hour before my shift would finish, Christina would get me to go and organise the paperwork down in the basement. Oh, God. You know, so, I actually just got a rush of, like, sick. So... The basement, so you had the front entrance and the back entrance to the hotel and it was a big hallway with like the stairs going up, then you'd have the kitchens and, and there was two big rooms there. Um, and in between the big staircase and room one, yeah, there was the door for the cellar, like the basement. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting scared talking about it. Do you it. know why? It's because it's literally, it's probably the worst area of the whole hotel. Like, to even go near the door, I had to psych myself up so much. They had opened the bit, they, they had opened the bit, this massive heavy door, if you could get it open. Then you'd go down these creaky as uh, stairs. Yeah. So that was the staircase, and here you'd have like a storage area, and it went like behind the stairs. And here you'd have a little um, Wait, sorry, tunnel, like a little tunnel yeah. bit. And that was where you would do the office work, and they had a window that looked out onto the street and everything wait can i just interject there the window was a small was one at on the, the top yeah where it's like if you look from the outside in the street it looks like somewhere where like a prisoner would yeah. be yeah so it was on if from the outside it was on the floor but from the inside it, it was, was on, on the ceiling. ceiling yeah um and i remember like this one time in particular as, as soon as i got on the first step I felt like I was gonna die, and I'm. Not, it's such. And I, I don't know if anyone experiences the feeling of gonna die as much as I do because, like, I get scared of being scared. <laughs> but it's like you, it's like my job to go and do the paperwork, so I couldn't just go. Oh, Chrissy, I'm actually really scared, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> do you yeah. know what I mean? And I used. To, I had to. Whenever I went down those stairs, I couldn't look that way. I'd have to just like walk down the stairs like a bit sideways and go straight it's, under the tunnel. This area, there was the something black and dark horrible. in that cellar all the time. And then this in particular time, I think I even finished my shift late because I was just too scared to come out the to do the pay, like of coming out of doing the paperwork. Until Christina eventually came into the office and I just pretended I was just like finishing up and then just hung around and chatted with her until she went upstairs because I couldn't face going out of the tunnel in, into that area to go back upstairs. Yeah, it's horrible. It's terrifying. This hotel that we're talking about is where the majority of my experiences come from. So you know how you were just saying that you didn't want to be like, oh Chrissy, I'm actually too scared because it was your job. Yeah. So one time I was literally just like, no, I'm not doing it. The bar that we were just talking about has is now the suite so i don't know if you ever felt the same way but i was always like when it used to be the bar i didn't mind being in this half of the bar where the actual bar was however as soon area. as i yeah as, as soon as i crossed the barrier invisible barrier the barrier into like the seating area and where you could come out the door it was just a really horrible feeling for me it was the where the sofa was with the big window didn't like it well but with the big window this particular story was when i was doing the laundry um in the bridal suite so i was taking off the old bed and i was going to change the bed in. so the bed in the suite has loads of decorative pillows because it's supposed to look nice um but there was i, I just remember there was loads of them and i was dreading going into the suite because it was a feather quilt feather quilts are so heavy and it was yeah. it was like a king size one as well so i was just like i don't want to do this uh, but I went in anyway and I was pulling off and pulling off and pulling off the cushions. And then um, one of the, so I was got to taking off one of the pillow covers and one of the decorative pillows had fallen off the bed onto my foot. So I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, and I just like booted it across the room. And uh, 
What I haven't told you about this story is when I was in it, so I don't know if you've seen this suite or not. Yeah. So you know how it's like the door, the bed, yeah. the window, the desk. Uh-huh. I was on this side of the bed next to the window that you just said you didn't like being next <laughs> to. Uh-huh. Um, so once I'd booted it across, I was just carrying on with my stuff and I... <laughs> it was literally one of the scariest experiences of my whole life. I uh, just felt the pillow, like, hit us. Something had literally picked up, picked or kicked the pillow back at me because I had kicked it over there. And I literally just no, in I'm my head, head on the back of my neck, I like literally stand in up. my head. I was like, I needed, I needed like a few seconds to process what had actually just happened. So I was literally like holding the pillow so it was long ways, and I was like this, and I was like, I just dropped it. Had my shoes on and everything. Didn't go round the bed. Ran over the <laughs> bed. Went downstairs. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So another story I've got from when I was a night porter. Uh, back in room 14. So, Alexandra had gone down again to do her breakfast shift and now it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. No, was it? What time did breakfast start? 7? Yeah. Yeah, so it would, it would have been just before then because she would have had to be downstairs before then. Um, and it was light, but I was at the time I was a lazy person so I would not get out of bed if I didn't have to. Um, <clears throat> and so I was alone in the room. I was on my own in the bedroom. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Alexandra had gone out, I locked the door and everything, and then I'd like turned over and closed my eyes. I hate this story so and much. And I literally, in my ear, heard. <sighs> and I just, I was like, you know, when you're actually paralyzed with fear. Yeah. And at the time, I had one of those, you know, do you remember those rubbery feeling yeah. MP3 players that were, like, that shape? Yeah. And I just, I put the buds in my ear and just shut my eyes tightly and pressed play. And I was like, please go away, please go away, please go away, please go away. Nobody believes that story. I do. <laughs> so, yeah, the dining room of the hotel, Um, when I started working there, I used to hate it. By the end of me working there, it was the only place where I felt comfortable, like I wasn't going to get attacked all the time. Um... So, part of my job was to clear the dining room, reset the dining room and hoover the floor for the next morning of breakfast. Um, and I remember who cooks the breakfast was in the kitchen, he was washing up and I was hoovering the floor and it was a Henry Hoover but it was also I'm a very so broken old as well. Henry Hoover. So I was going towards the bar hoovering and it was like the actual hoover part of it was like getting stuck as if it was trapped on something. So I was, yeah, I yanked it and it like yanked back. And I was like, <laughs> not looking back, <laughs> just do it again. Yanked it and it yanked back. I did it one more time and I was like, this is not just me. Someone's messing with us and all I'm trying to do is my job. And I was just like, oh, you're gonna have to talk them and tell them to stop it. And I, I didn't even, I didn't even turn around at this point, but I was just like, I'm just trying to hoover the floor, leave it alone. I turned around as the hoover was being rolled across the floor back. No, I don't like that. Do you know, I've just thought. What? So I remember the one time I did um, uh, a dinner service, right? Mm-hmm. So you know how dinner, I don't know, did you ever do dinner service? No. Okay, so you'd, obviously everyone leaves, you set it up for the morning breakfast. I did the tables and I did the knives and forks and stuff. And I did everything, like, the way I was shown to do it by Christina. Mm-hmm. So she did one and then I, like, copied them all. And, yeah. Uh, and I went and did something else and she was like, you need to switch all them knives and forks around. And I remember at the time in my head I was like, I was like, I, but I did it the way you told us to. And I didn't say that to her. But I literally, at the time, I was just like, oh, well, obviously you've shown us how to do it wrong. But maybe they changed the cutlery around. That how is did I so forget weird. that? That is so weird because, um, like, one of my shifts where I was resetting the tables, I always used to start on table one, so... Was that the one in that corner? Table one was the one right next to the door. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So the tables would basically go table one, table two, three, four, five, and six, and there was only six tables, because it's quite a small hotel. Yeah. Um, 
So I always used to sit on table one and then make myself, make myself round. <laughs> make my way around to table six and then be done. So I was putting out all the, so what I used to do was I used to get the plates, the cups and saucers and everything and put out first and then I would go and get the cutlery and I would put the cutlery out. So I started on table one and by the time I got to like table four, I'd ran out of cutlery so I had to go back through to the kitchen. And as I was going back through to the kitchen, I got a glance of the table and it was just not the way that I'd set it out at all. I couldn't even, couldn't even describe to you in what way it had changed. It just wasn't the same. And I was like, <laughs> you know, when you go past something and you just go like that and yeah. change it. Uh, I did that, went in the kitchen to get the cutlery, came back out, glanced at it again and it had moved. And I was like, there's no guests. And I was just like, That's how I knew though, like, whatever was in the dining room, I can't speak for any other rooms, but whatever was in the dining room wasn't like an evil one, it just yeah. wanted attention. So, at the top of the second floor was the cupboard that held like all of the... Um, Little jams and Yeah, stuff. stock in for like the tea, the jam, the, the butter. The borders, biscuits. Yeah. Near the end of my shift, I was doing the laundry through the rooms and I got to the second floor. So the second floor, you come up the stairs, there's a room there, a room there, because the wall kind of goes like this next to the stairs. Yeah. So there was a room there, a room there, and then there's the cupboard, and you can go up like that into the rest of the rooms. So I also had a bottle of water with this, because I used to steal the water. Um, so I had a bottle of water with this, and the cupboard door on the right was slightly open, and I didn't want to take my water in the rooms in case I'd forgotten it. I never like going back into the rooms for obvious reasons. Um, so I'd literally, as I was going up the stairs, I'd literally just gone like this, as if the door was open, I just went like that, placed my bottle there, and gone into one of the rooms. I'd gotten the laundry out of this room, and as I was going back down the stairs, I, like, reached into the cupboard to get my bottle of water, and as I grabbed my bottle, <laughs> I actually hate this story, because Lee doesn't believe us still. I believe you. Like, mum literally texted him, and he was like, nah, she's full. <laughs> as I was coming out of the room, I'd gone like that to get my water and as I like grabbed onto my water bottle the door <laughs> the door wasn't any more open than it was when I put my bottle in so there was like this much space like enough for my arm to fit through and bring my water bottle out so yeah I grabbed my water bottle went to bring my arm out and the door just like <sighs> didn't feel or automatically it didn't feel like it had been pushed against my arm but it felt like there was something on the other side of the door trapping it so yeah. my arm couldn't come out. So I, like, <laughs> full hands, right? Full hands. I can't just go like this and open the door. So I did it again, pulled my arm out, and this time it literally went on my arm like that. And I was just like, I was just like, you know what? This means that I'm, like, right here, and they are right here in my face going, ha-ha, look what I'm doing to you. And, like, it left this with a really, like, do you remember the bruise yeah, and the mark that I had? It was, like, this big on my arm. Eventually, I just had to drop the washing that was in my hand and pry the door open. Fled down them stairs, like, <laughs> flash. <laughs> oh, God, my back hurts. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pass you over to future Lauren to see if her back hurts. Thanks, past Lauren. <laughs> it does hurt. But now, so does your shoulder. Cue special guest. Hi. <laughs> now we're here with our oldest sister, oldest sister, Alexandra. Thanks. Like we've mentioned, everyone in the family basically has worked at the family hotel. This worked there the longest out of all of us mm -hmm. and has the most terrifying stories out of all of us. Uh, so you lot, you... 123 of you beautiful are going to get to listen to her terrifying, ski, spooky, Halloween, Halloween stories. I haven't done that in this video yet. <laughs> Which story would you like to start off with? Well, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When I started working there, um, I was mainly waitressing on the morning and on an evening for evening meals and stuff and uh, 
so you, you guys know the dining room, yeah? yeah? Okay. So there was a few people who work who work there and who worked there. Both past and present tense, you know, I think how did it Shut up! <laughs> so I come down uh, through the dining room in the morning, bearing in mind I'd set the tables from the night before and one of the tables had something out of place on it. And now when I first started working there ooh, when I first started working there, um I didn't like the way that the side plates were placed on the table. Mm -hmm. They were placed as the table yeah. is a square. They were placed pointing in. Yeah. I hated that. Yeah. So Some I the... put them to the. I put put them pointing away from where you were sitting. So the knives would be straight. The napkins would be straight, and it went around on each each you know place sitting at the table. So I would come downstairs on the morning and find that the knives had been turned and it was either a full so that that would that had changed and I was like didn't really think much of it I thought oh, I must have knocked it or whatever and it kept happening and it wasn't until I'd been there for a little while um I'd started mentioning this these things to the chef who was working there at the time I'd mentioned it to the chef and she was like oh it'll be and I'm like well who so found out that was somebody who used to work there who was a mother of somebody who was working there and I was like, oh, right, okay. So, so she's just moving me place sittings for no apparent reason. Absolutely. So, you know, I didn't mind this. I used to then come into the dining room on the morning and say hi. Because it was her domain. Mm -hmm. I thought, I don't want to make her so feel she like... she the one you off with the hoover? Maybe. Mm, well, we'll find out about that one in a minute. <laughs> so, it wasn't just like... The odd knife and that that was moving I'm, I'm talking about entire place settings were being disturbed now given the fact that i was the only one staying there on a night time i set the dining room after the chef had left so it couldn't have been the chef i was just about to say it couldn't be anyone like playing a trick on you because there's not enough staff members for you to not know where no, another and, yeah. and, and the entrances to the back of the hotel were um, double bolted from the inside so I always made sure that those doors were bolted so once I'd finished with the dining room and locked the dining room door as we do nobody could get back in there unless it was me with a key. Yeah. So I would come down in the morning and find little things had moved and then it was like whole place settings were being disturbed and it was just like I don't why why would she be moving the knives and forks i don't understand uh, the plate the, the, the side plate yeah i could get that yeah because i'm changing that and she doesn't like it but why would you then start changing you know knocking the spoon out the way knocking the fork the other way turning the cups over and i'd never thought at any point turning you the cups over yeah i don't know why but that seems, feels more extreme the cups were turned over but it, it just one and it was always on the same table it was never Which on any was other, the one closest to the revolving door <laughs> that's literally what she said yes to this used to happen like quite regularly and then um i thought like would reach the the maximum point like climax if you will of where it was yeah. going that i wasn't going to get any further and then um it started happening while i was on shift and in the kitchen waiting for customers to come down i would hear the plates and things oh, being knocked no. in i would I go and look like through the window to see if there's anybody there was nobody there thought oh that's a bit weird the, there was never anything turned over on the tables at that point it was just noise it was the noise of the cup being turned over and put back down because you could hear the teaspoon mm -hmm. rattling on the thing as well so yeah that was that was really creepy and that was a daily occurrence so yeah that's that's me that's me little story do you know what felt creepy to me what they walked way to the bathroom in room one is that the one with the... Oh yeah, my god, how did we forget about that? Yeah, it's horrible, it's absolutely horrible. I slept in room one quite a few times and there was a few occasions where I was terrified to go to the toilet until it got lighter. Even with a light on, because some it's of this, this little corridor was pretty, pretty much about the length of this room, mm -hmm. and it was it was an R train. It was really short as well, wasn't it? What freaked me out about it was the fact that it wasn't at full person height. I could literally just walk through it with like that much room between the ceiling in my head. Um, I still ducked every time I went into it though. And there was a nice little bathroom at the other side, but between you know the bedroom and the nice bathroom. The bedroom that had no atmosphere whatsoever you had this dank dinky little Cold. corridor that was Dark. dimly lit and it was just creepy there always was something that felt weird in the cellar oh the cellar was always, about this. 
terrified. Just and it wasn't the bit where you did the work. It you know how you'd go down the stairs that way to work that way with the storage stuff, and the kind of uh, that was that area. Mm -mm. So something black in it. Mm -mm. No. Why are you saying no? Because it was in the the work area. It was over by the uh, the vent. A few times when I went down, and you had to turn the light on, but the light was around the other side of the wall. Now, I tried not to look into the room directly because that just freaked me out. I didn't like it because I knew something was there, didn't feel right. Um, and there was an odd few times I forced myself. And you know, you can just like say something is more dense than yeah. the rest. And it was always hanging around in front of that part, in front of that like kind of vent. It always seemed like it was just in front of it. Mm -hmm. But perception wise it could have been closer to i always felt but i didn't oh, always I feel, feel no, but i was in there so long did it. sometimes feel when i was doing the work on the computer that i was being watched and there was a few times was a cold breeze came past but you know you're in a cellar yeah. there's a vent behind you just pass it off as you know as that you can find an excuse for uh -huh. yeah so that was that was pretty creepy however not as creepy as the time i heard somebody die what? See, so, yeah, I was cleaning down the dining room and I had the dining room door wedged open now. I'd seen every guest that we had in the hotel. There was only 14 bedrooms. I knew all of the guests by name and face because I chucked the f***ers in the night before. Um, so I knew everybody had gone out and I was cleaning down the, the dining room, sorting the tables out and stuff. And um, I heard a male voice shriek, maybe, scream, I don't know. Um, and then... <laughs> on the floor like doof 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 so I obviously I went cold and thought somebody's just fallen down the and stairs now it's your responsibility as well man. yeah uh -huh. so I pelted out of the dining room bearing in mind I hadn't had me hip to the yeah, point so say. my running at that point in time was uh, something to be seen uh, so I ran up the stairs expecting to see somebody with a case or something had fallen down um, didn't see anything so I went across the corridors and that came back and I thought I'll go and check the second floor as well just to be on the safe side went upstairs looked down the floor. corridor nothing there so I came all the way back downstairs I thought this is weird and then um, I came back into the dining room and I said to the chef I was like did you hear that so I wonder where you're gone what were you doing and I said there was somebody I heard somebody fall like it was somebody fell down the stairs mm -hmm. um now, just to just to point out that it couldn't have been noise from outside because where the dining room where I was working actually had a window out to another potential place that this noise could have come from, which was the decking. Um, but I could see the full entire decking from this window, and if I moved through the kitchen, I could see more of the decking. Not only that, the door into the hotel from the decking was a full glass window, so you could see the entirety of the car park. So I knew that there wasn't anybody else there. There was very minimal cars there, so it couldn't have been a car door, because um, the only cars that were there was uh, one that belonged to the owner that he'd left overnight, and one that belonged to um, the guy who owned a, a small business nearby. So there was two cars in the car park, no people about, and you would not have heard this noise from the front of the house because it was stone at the front of the house. It wasn't wood, it wasn't um, anything that was hollow, it was all stone, because it was an old Georgian house. That's just shut the shut the non-believer. So <laughs> I then said to the chef, I was like, no, I've just heard this guy fall down the stairs. I heard and I mimicked the noise, which was <gasps> like that and do do do. Yeah. And uh, it was like, oh, you must be hearing things like playing it off like a joke. And then we started, you know, joking about, oh, was it trying to play a trick on me? Then I heard it again, the same exact noise, slightly louder this time, and the three thuds as well. So. I looked what, on at the them. same day. Like yeah, the it was when it was within like ten minutes of each other. Oh, that's so weird. <clears throat> so I then Trying I looked. to get your attention. Possibly. So I looked at Lorraine, and my face went white, and I went, "That was it again." And I just pelted off again, <laughs> again, running like a dog. Uh, up the stairs, I was shouting, "Hello, hello! Is anybody there?" I had the keys with us this time because I grabbed them just in case. Don't know why. Um, and I went all the way back up again checked all of the the corridors I say, it wasn't like it's not like you could quickly get up them stairs and yeah the stairs had, are long and they're also yeah. there's also a lot of them and so long big staircases then you had to find your way to the other like it was like a 
What's worse as well is the steps are different heights. Oh, so yeah, the higher, they were the higher you got up, the more steep the steps were. Um, so I'd gone up to the top. I went all the way along the corridors this time. Um, what, even corridor two? Yeah. Oh, I went all right oh, way right. to the end where the little window is. I thought you were going to see where the little girl is and I was going to shit my pants because she still saw a little girl there. <gasps> Don't. If you're about to tell me that you've seen a little girl at that window, I'm going to right now. Oh, what, even right because she's been with her at the time? I didn't see a little girl. What did you say? What was she, what did she look like? I don't know. She was probably about five years old. What was she dressed in? L typical white dress. You know how yesterday I was saying it's a typical ooh, I saw a ghost. Yeah. But there was it like a dress. pinny dress that a Victorian girl would have worn. Stop on. it! What are you gonna say right now? Stop it! I'm done. This video's over. <laughs> so I went right the way in the corridor. I was sh shouting all up and down the corridors. Hello, hello. Is there anybody there? Do you need help? Do you need help? I then went and checked the bar because the bar was locked. I'd been in the bar that night, locked up, and knew there was nobody in there. And um, I knew that some of the rooms were vacant as well, so there wouldn't be anybody in there at all. So I came back downstairs, puffing and panting, and I said to... I was like, I shit you not, somebody has just fallen down. I can hear, I heard them, mm -hmm. I heard them fall, but there's nobody there. And she went, did I ever tell you about... <laughs> and I'm from the bar. I'm from the bar. And I was like, no. She says, come here. She'd made more coffees and she sat down. Um, she said, uh, used to work in the, the hotel and he used to work on the bar. And he was a bit of a kind of, a, um, almost like a guardian for the women that worked there. He always used to like make sure they were all right and look after them. Um, she said that had uh, used to work there and um, one day, he was he he went and got his shopping, and as I was un, of the understanding that he lived in an upstairs flat, so it was like a like a a block of flats type thing, um and he had his shopping and he was going up the stairs with his shopping and he had a heart attack, halfway up to the apartment and fell down the stairs, <laughs> and that's how he died. Oh my God! Do you think he just relives his death? I don't know. That's horrible. That's if really he does. sad. Oh, do you know what makes us feel really sad? Like, you might be, you might do it in front of people so that they come and help them, but obviously... Mm -hmm. But going back to the little girl in the white dress. So, I was in the bar one night after it had closed. I was sleeping in the bar that night because all the rooms were full. And uh, I had brothers and we were sitting watching a film. And we were talking. What about, I don't know. But he kind of... like that oh, over over by the door we were on the i pulled one of the sofas around so we were kind of hemmed in mm -hmm. if you know what i mean yeah. and the way the sofa was you had like the sofa the door to get out of the bar here the fireplace there so you know these girls yeah. know a uh, fireplace there so that it was kind of like here mm -hmm. and he looked over uh looked over at where the door is and i was like what and he went i don't want to freak you out because i know you're sleeping in here tonight but i've just seen a small woman in white walk through the wall and i was like don't because i do have to sleep in here tonight he went i know you do he says but i've just seen her walk through the wall he went and it wasn't the door she walked through the wall and i was like oh, and just, i always thought was more of a skeptic kind of person as well. He tries to keep an open yeah, mind. Yeah, so for him to be like, I've just seen somebody walk through the wall. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wheel. Like, it's a wheel goal. It's going to be a wheel. I made this. I made this. And I made this. And you can find them all on uh, Resin by Alex on Instagram. Uh, and Resin by Alex on Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's got all of our prices listed along with the postage. And... You do custom pieces, mm -hmm. is that right? I do, yep. Including these ones, these ones are custom pieces. I'm currently working on free custom orders right now, so please, I'm in high demand. <laughs> and like I said, <laughs> Christmas coming up, these kind of things make the perfect stocking for us. So I think that's all of Alexandra's ghost stories, but if I remember correctly, Charlotte and Lauren are eating some donuts. How are those donuts? They're real good, Charlotte, thanks for asking. <laughs> So there's going to be some really exciting new things 
coming up on this channel soon um which is gonna mean more content and probably twice weekly content yeah so um if that isn't enough reason to get you to subscribe um i don't know what it is snacks 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 was just a bling before now you're the one all i did was blink twice sarah this one's for you <laughs> and do you know what i am a friend of a girl <laughs> <laughs> Obviously that's not all of our paranormal experiences but we have shared with you many of them. If you haven't seen last week's video go check out part one. The stories in there are also very spooky. There's also a little bit of actual paranormal activity. Yeah. So Real if you haven't ghosts. seen it make sure you do go and watch it. In all seriousness though we would love <laughs> with all our tiny hearts <laughs> love it if you would subscribe it's actually so easy to do yeah. even if you're on a tv all you have to do is go along to the three little dots and press subscribe it won't even take you off the video anyway if you have enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and also if you would like to become a little hun then please consider subscribing also turn on those notifications so that you never miss an upload that's all from us until next week Goodbye. Goodbye.